All right. So that was a great start to the day. It's just really good. So who we have up next is Dr. Kyle Stevens. So Dr. Stevens believes in empowering patients to live the life they have always aspired to, helping his patients accomplish this with plant-based nutrition, lifestyle habits, and prevention. In addition to a whole food plant-based diet approach to nutrition and chronic disease management, Dr. Stevens also has special clinical interest in preventative medicine, pediatrics, and women's health. Um, during his medical training, Dr. Stevens had the amazing opportunity to train with Dr. John McDougall. Anybody that knows a little bit about this world, that's a big name. One of the first lifestyle medicine doctors, and he's going to be sharing with us some of his learning with us today. He practices in Ventura with Dignity Health Medical Group. And I will go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Kyle Stevens. How's my sound? You sound good. We're good? Okay, fantastic. Disabled participant screen sharing. How do I do my, uh, how do I share my screen, guys? Not letting me. And um, there should be a screen at the bottom for okay, you. We, if not, no, let me just double yeah, check. It, no, we, it's on now, it looks like. Okay, good. And then share. Get this into present mode. Kyle, can we make you a little louder, please? So that's gonna, I, I'll talk up as much as I can. I don't know, how, how is that sound? How's that volume there? Great. That's okay. All right, I'll just make sure I talk nice and loud. Th does the screen look okay? Yes. We're good to go? All right, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Stevens, um, pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm a family doc in, Jay, thank you very much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the intro. Um, the, you know, I'm a family doc in Ventura um, and I've been here in Ventura for, for a few years now and, and I'm building up my practice and uh, very much interested in, in uh, lifestyle medicine and, and uh, using diet and nutrition as a way to uh, address um, the chronic diseases and the healthcare problems that we have uh, facing our community and, and larger, you know, our, our, our country and the globe, um, quite frankly. So um, my, my um, idea for today was to give you guys some practical um, information on um, how to approach this journey um, with uh, changing your diet and, and making the nutrition uh, changes that, that can be helpful for you. So the way that I'm going to do that is we're going to just go over kind of the nitty gritty of reading a nutrition label. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully that can give you some practical um, 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 F, uh, uh, I'm sorry, some practical um, advice here for, for how to, to uh, go about making some of these changes. So I'm going to start with um, the basic rules that I like to, to uh, uh, recommend to patients, is, which is based on Michael Pollan's uh, food rules. Um, and and the, the rules are, are pretty basic. They're very simple. And they're a nice kind of orienta orienting um, framework for us to approach uh, uh, nutrition. Uh, and his rules are, are just this, eat real food. If it's something that your grandma would not have recognized as food, uh, then, then don't eat it. And there's so much processed food out there these days and food that isn't good for us uh, that we need to be really looking at eating real food. So I'm gonna be going over nutrition labels and nutrition labels um, are boxed and packaged and processed for the most part. And uh, I, I'm just wanting to be very clear up front that this probably isn't the best foods for us to be eating oftentimes. And we'll see that as we, as we dive into these nutrition labels a little bit. Uh, that, um, and, and so I, I, but we oftentimes still eat these foods or you have these foods in your home. So I want you to be able to have a, a way to analyze them a, a little bit and, uh, and make a decision about whether that 
particular packaged food that you have is something that you should continue to be eating, or if you maybe should swap it out for something that's a little bit healthier. Um, and a lot of times this is about uh, kind of swapping up um, and getting things that are healthier for us to be incorporating into our diet. So that's one is eat real food. Uh, and then the, his second rule is not too much. Um, portion control and, and not trying to, you know, uh, uh, overeat is an important part of, of uh, uh, nutrition. Um, and then the, the last uh, uh, rule is mostly plants. So we talk about plant-based diets, and I heard uh, sort of the end of Dr. Mesher Cox presentation where she was talking about the Adventists and these different styles or patterns of eating. And we know, I mean, the common theme that all healthy diets have across the globe is eating plants as the majority. And I'm not talking about a 51, 49% majority. I'm talking about an 85, 90% majority of plants, plants, plants as the food that's, that's, that's making up the bulk of what your, where your calories and energy is coming from. So, um, when we're going to start talking about the nutrition label, we're going to start with this idea that, that no label is best, right? So the foods that we find uh, um, in the um, uh, produce section of the grocery store, at the, uh, at the farmer's market, in the bulk bins, these are the foods that we should be going towards. And when we're pulling them right out from, from uh, nature and then uh, um, selling them to us, these things here don't have a label. And these are the foods that I would encourage you to be eating the most of um, for uh, rather than, than the ones that have labels. But uh, so that's, that's the first idea. And then the second idea here is that we have to really ignore the marketing that we see on packaging. Okay. So um, I'm going to give you some simple tips on looking at a nutrition label. Um, but, but I really want us to focus on looking at the label on the back of the packaging and not the, the, the marketing that's on the front of the label, the, the packaging. Because uh, that's what it is. It's marketing. Low fat, keto, healthy. There's pictures of hearts. There's picture, you know, no, no high fructose um, uh, uh, corn syrup. These things are all there to market, to gather attention, and to to um, distract you from looking deeper into what's actually in the 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 uh, packaged food that you're going to be um, um, eating. So. Uh, the, some examples of, of this, um, as you see this one here, right? 30% less fat, it's less than the leading potato chip. There's no artificial flavors or preservatives. Oh, that sounds good. That might be a good healthy food. I, I will show you that these are not healthy foods, but these are sort of the things that, that um, are marketed to us that we have to just be cognizant and be aware of. And I really want people to be um, not looking at the, the uh, labels um, like we see here, right? So 65% less fat, Honey Nut Cheerios, there's a big heart, uh, can help lower cholesterol. It's part of a heart healthy diet. Um, some Triscuits, there's only three simple ingredients, reduce fat, it's 25% less fat than the original Triscuit. Well, I mean, what is, what is this, what does any of this really mean? Here's a, a healthy request uh, soup. Um, there's, there's whole grain rice and low fat and low cholesterol. And then when you look at kids' food, ooh, sorry, when you look at kids' foods, this can be one of the worst places that we see this marketing and this advertising. I mean, not only do we have my daughter's favorite characters in the whole world on here, and that's going to be an attention grabber, then we have the stuff for the adults, no high fructose corn syrup, no artificial flavors um, or, or colors, and it's a good source of vitamin D and calcium. Once again, all of this stuff is, is things that we just want to kind of ignore and move past and try and really look deeper into what's going on with the actual product. Um, and here's another example of, a, of a, um, a, like a cookie. High fructose corn syrup, partially hydrogenated oils, artificial colors and preservatives. And it says it's without all of these things. Um, and then a, a, a bread source here, right? So that is just the general idea. Okay, so now let's get into the, the nitty gritty of the nutritional, nutrition label itself. Um, these things that I have circled are really all we need to be focusing on, 
on for this simple approach to a nutrition label analysis. Okay. So the, the calories is going to be something that we're going to use as a comparison. Um, and uh, the total uh, grams of fat. So the one that says 15 grams um, in this particular label, the sodium amount, the 140 milligrams in this label, and then the ingredient list. So these are the only areas that we're going to be focusing on when we're doing this approach to a nutrition label analysis. Uh, the, the, Things that you'll notice there's there's and not to say that there's not other important information in here. There are other things in here that are very important and can be helpful. But we're trying to I'm just trying to give you a very simple approach to this. And uh, these are the four areas that will be that will be able to use to make a decision about about a packaged food. Uh, the one of the things that I'll just point out is that I'm not talking about protein. Okay, protein. We, we seem to be obsessed with protein intake in this country and and. Uh, for a variety of reasons, um, but that's not something that we're going to be focused on here. There's very, very few people that are, are protein deficient uh, in this country. Um, we, we, I, I have a, I'm much more interested in people eating whole foods than focusing on macronutrients. How much protein am I getting? How much fat am I getting? Um, how much uh, um, uh, carbohydrates am I getting? If you're eating whole foods, um, and plant-based whole foods, these things take care of themselves. The natural ratios of these things in nature um, are what, what our body needs. Um, so that would, be, that would be one thing I'd say. The second thing I say, if you, if you want to focus on macronutrients, uh, or, and this is how I use this kind of as a rebuttal oftentimes for people when they start talking about protein. If you want to focus on a macronutrient, the macronutrient I would expect, I would, I would want you to focus on is fiber. We should be getting 35 grams of fiber daily as in our diet, not um, as a supplement. 35 grams of daily fiber, uh, dietary fiber. Um, and this is a really, really, this is a lot of fiber. And, um, and most of us are not even getting close. The, if you're able to hit this amount of fiber, you are going to be eating a lot of good, healthy, nutrient dense foods um, that are going to be plant based. So that if, if we have a, a macronutrient uh, uh, focus, that would be the one place that I would actually recommend that you that you look at. All right. So here are the the uh, label uh, reading rules. I haven't. I, I neglected to mention this earlier. So uh, when I was uh, um, spending some time in training with with Dr. McDougall. His uh, main dietitian that he uses is this gentleman, Jeff Novick. And so these uh, nutrition label rules are uh, borrowed from him. I've adapted it a little bit for this presentation, but I just wanted to make sure that I was giving him credit for what, for what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so the first thing here, I got to move this. I got something covering my, all right. The, uh, the first, the first uh, uh, rule that I want to uh, talk about is fat. So the percentage of, of calories from fat needs to be less than 20%, okay? And there should be no saturated fats, trans fats in the first five ingredients in the ingredient list. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll get into the details on that, but this is just sort of a general overview of where we're gonna be going with these rules. Salt, the, the milligrams of salt need to be less than the total calories. This becomes a really easy thing to look at. Um, and then sugar, uh, I, we want to try to avoid it being one of the first five ingredients that's listed in the ingredient list. And then grains, we want to be looking for whole grains in the ingredient uh, list. So let me dive into each of these uh, in turn. So uh, fat. So as I, as I just said, um, the calories from fat needs to be less than the total, the, the, uh, less than 20% of the total calories and no saturated or trans fats in the first five ingredients. So when you look at sort of camps of, of uh, fat intake, you have camps that, uh, uh, that believe that, you know, like Ornish and, and, and um, Esselstein, 10% of your calories should be from fat, any more than that, and it's too much fat. You have people that are a little bit more liberal with this, and they'll say more or, around the lines of 30% of fat is okay. Um, we're going to kind of cut the difference in half and say 20% is okay for this particular uh, label uh, exercise. Um, but if you're eating good whole foods uh, you, you, uh, that are plant-based whole foods, you really shouldn't be getting that much fat in, in the foods that you're eating that are not packaged anyway. But um, America, the average American intake of calories from fat is 35%. So to give us an idea of, of uh, where people generally are. Um, so 
in general, we want to be avoiding saturated and trans fats, but for, for this label reading exercise, uh, we definitely don't want it to be high up in the ingredient list. Um, and so we're, we're talking about it being outside of the top five. Um, and then what, what, do these what do these look like on an ingredient list? They look like dairy, uh, milk, eggs, butter, lard, cocoa butter, palm oil, palm kernel oil, um, margarine shortening. So there's a bunch of different ways that these are labeled um, in, in the ingredient list. Okay, so there's, this is the, the, with this exercise, this is the worst one as far as there's some math involved in this, okay? So uh, bear with me, it's not that bad. And oftentimes we don't even need to get to this step in order to make a decision about whether or not the, uh, the food that we're looking at um, is um, gonna be something that we want to, to, uh, to, to eat. So the old, this is the old nutrition label. They had calories from fat as a separate uh, uh, designated line on the label. And you see here that the calories from fat is 40, okay? And the total calories for this, for the serving size is 120. So uh, the math is, is simply 40 divided by 120. And that gives us a number that we need to turn into a percentage. And that percentage is 33%, okay? So this is kind of in line with what the average American fat intake is here is 35%, this is 33. This is above our 20%. So we're gonna call this as too high. Um, so that is the old nutrition label. Now, new nutrition labels have taken out that calories from fat uh, line. So we have to, to, to get to that point uh, with a new nutrition label, which is an extra step. Um, but I guess they want us to be practicing our basic math, math skills here, which I guess isn't a bad thing for uh, cognitive uh, um, longevity. Um, okay. So this is a, another nutrition label here. And so, and as you can see, we no longer have that um, uh, calories from fat designation. So we need to get to that. Um, and, and the multiplier is nine, okay? So one gram of fat has, has nine calories. So we, so we need to multiply the total fat number by nine. That gets us to 72. So now we are, we have the calories from fat. We have that number that was on the previous nutrition labels. And then we just take that and we divide that by the, the calories in the serving. So 72 divided by hundred, that's 0.72. We turn it into a, a, a percentage and that's 72%, much too high. Um, so this would be something that we would try, we would try to avoid. Okay, so salt, sodium. So this one here is very easy as far as the rule and the nutrition label uh, exercise that we're going to be doing. So uh, the milligrams of sodium per serving should be less than the calories per serving. Very easy. I'll show you, show you it on a label and you can see how easy it is. Um, we only need about 250 milligrams of sodium per day, uh, but the average American is, is a, a more around 4,000 milligrams. So we eat a ton of salt. Um, our, our foods that we eat, our processed foods are, are uh, very heavily salted. Um, we get, you know, this is how processed foods get their flavors is from the fat, the sugar, and the salt. So um, you can see kind of where, what we're up against uh, with this. So this is uh, an, an analysis of this particular soup. Um, and th this is an easy one when we're doing the sodium or the salt content. We just look at the calories, 110. We look at the sodium, 410. And if the sodium number is above the calorie number, it's, there's too much sodium in that uh, particular um, um, item. Uh, and this one's very much above it. It's like a four to one ratio. And we're really looking for more of a one to one ratio on this. And now moving on to sugar. Uh, and what we want to do here is, is uh, we're going to be looking at the ingredient list and no sugar is listed as one of the first uh, five ingredients. So in general, our goal is to avoid added sugar. Naturally occurring sugars in whole plant uh, foods are perfectly fine. So uh, you look at an apple or an orange, these things come with sugars in them. And that's the basic fuel that the body runs on, but they also come packed with fiber. Um, and the, the, the fiber has a protective uh, effect as far as uh, glucose uptake in the body. Um, and we don't uh, find that this is actually something that we should be avoiding. And they're very, very naturally occurring sugars are very good for us. You know, what we do, I mean, if you think of the, the story I've always heard about this is you look at a sugar cane, right? A sugar cane um, is, is 
you know, a very hard, rough plant. And to get the sugar out of that, you have to, to, to take that out and uh, rip that apart and process that. Uh, nature does a good job of sort of protecting us from, from sugar um, if we uh, eat it in its natural form, but we rip it apart and then uh, extract it and then, re you know, refine it to such a high degree. Uh, and, and then we run into trouble when we do that. Um, Added sugar is often hidden uh, in all sorts of different uh, in different names and different forms. Uh, brown sugar, molasses, barley malt sugar, brown rice syrup, agave nectar, honey, sucrose, fructose, any of the oses, evaporated cane juice, high fructose corn syrup, and there's more. So you, you need to learn these um, um, over time, but you'll get familiar with them. And there's some really common ones that we see. So we'll go back to the, the Honey Nut Cheerios. These are the ones that are healthy for our hearts. Um, sorry, this one's a little bit blurry. I apologize that, uh, about that. Um, and we are uh, on this one looking at the uh, ingredient list. And, and we're looking to make sure that sugar isn't um, up in the top five of the ingredient list. Um, and as you can see on this one, sugar is number two. So uh, it has some whole grains in it, good. That's fantastic, as we'll see in a second. Um, but the the uh, the sugar is the second thing. This is a sugar item. This is a sugar cereal. Okay. Um, and and what the other thing that happens, the other the other trick that sort of happens is that the uh, the the food manufacturers will take sugars and they'll have three or four different types of sugars, so it doesn't look as bad when you're looking at the ingredient list. They've 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 decoupled all the sugars and they've put them lower in the list and there's honey and molasses and high fructose corn syrup and they're all sort of uh, broken apart. But when you add these all together, there is a lot of, of sugar that is added into these products. And then grains. Uh, so we're looking for whole grains in the ingredient list. So when we're looking at breads, or we're looking at crackers, uh, we're looking for whole grains in the ingredient list. Once again, don't trust the front of the of the package. Uh, it's very important to look in the back. Um, and the uh, the examples of these that you see are whole wheat, cracked, rolled, stone ground, crushed, gram. These are um, examples of whole grains, uh, and that's what we're looking for in ingredient lists on packages. The ones that we're trying to avoid are, are wheat, um, white, durum, uh, semolina, bleached, unbleached, enriched flours. These are not whole grains, um, and these are therefore more processed um, and, and not as good for us. So here is the the uh, the review of what, what we uh, what I talked about earlier the the, um, the rules for this. So um, we're doing less than than twenty percent of the total calories um, for fat and no saturated or trans fats in the first five ingredients. Salt is less than the total calories, and we don't want sugar in the first five ingredients. And if there is if there are whole grains in uh, uh, in the product, then we want that to be a uh, uh, um, there, let me say that again. If there are grains in the product, we want those grains to be whole grains. So that's kind of the, the overview. And I think that the steps are very easy. Um, and, I, and I break them down into these three steps is that the first thing we do is we look at the sodium. The sodium's higher than the, than the calories. Then we move away from that particular product. That's a very easy comparison. The second thing to do is then I then would shift your focus down to the ingredient list and start looking. What are the first five ingredients? Um, are there sugars in the first five ingredients? Um, are the grains, if there's grains in the product, are those whole grains? Um, in the, are there uh, saturated or, or trans fats um, in the first five ingredients? Um, and then after that, then we go do the math part, uh, which can be the, the hardest part. And so we save that to the end because we might've already ruled out the product by that, by that point. All right, so let's give this a shot. I have things here in my way again because of how this is set up, one second. Um, so this is a, a, a soup product. Um, and so um, what I would, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this, I was hoping to give you guys just a, like a, a you know a minute or thirty seconds or so to to go through the steps. I'm going to kind of walk talk you talk you through it. So uh, work with me here on this, um, and then let's see if we kind of get to the uh, to a similar uh, answer here. So we start down down at the ingredients. Uh, first five ingredients: water, good. Organic short grain, brown rice, good. Organic black turtle beans, great. Organic onion flakes, fine. Organic 
organic paprika powder, fine. Organic garlic powder, fine. Then we get salt, okay, fine. All right, so ingredient list. You know what, I didn't do that right, did I? So let me start that over. So we start with the sodium. So we start with the sodium. The sodium is 100 milligrams and the calories are 120. So that passes that part. Good, fine, we move on to the ingredient list, which is what I just did. The ingredient list looks pretty good. Nice, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, items in the ingredient list. Um, and then the next part that we do is that we then do the fat calculation. Okay, and so th this is an old label. It has the calories from fat there as 10. Um, and you can see that the, the um, uh, if you were to take the 10 and you divide it by 120, um, we, we are under the 20%. Um, and so this one actually passes. This would be a good, um, uh, appropriate, uh, processed food for, for you to consider um, eating. All right, let's do another one. So this one is a Beyond, uh, uh, Beyond Burger. And um, what you see here, so we're gonna start with the sodium. So we're gonna go through the whole thing, um, even though that right from the get-go, sodium 350, calories 260, this doesn't pass the sodium uh, uh, test. And this would be something that I would, would recommend that you shy away from. Um, when we go down to the um, ingredient list, um, we'll also see that it doesn't pass that. So water, number one, fine, pea protein, Okay, fine. Expeller pressed canola oil. So canola oil um, is a plant-based oil, um, but it has um, um, some saturated fat in it. It's not mostly saturated fat, but it has some saturated fat in it. So, okay, we're going to kind of move on from there. But then the next thing, number three, is refined coconut oil. Coconut oil is a plant saturated fat that is uh, something that, that I would uh, recommend that you try and shy away from because it is a saturated fat that isn't going to be um, as good for our health. Um, so it doesn't pass on that one either. Um, the the uh, next step that we would then do is we would do the fat math analysis. Um, and so we would take 18 and we multiply it by nine and we get 162 with that. And then we would divide that by the 260 calories. Um, and that gets us a percentage of 62%. Okay, so 62% of the, of the calories are from fat. Um, and that is much higher than the 20% that we're shooting for when we're looking at processed or packaged foods. Um, so this one, I think we can read. Okay. All right. So same thing on this one. So um, these are some uh, crispy bread, kind of like crackers. Um, and we start with the sodium. So the sodium 25 calories, 35. Great. Passes the sodium test. We go down to the ingredients, whole grain, rye flour. Good. It's a whole grain, a whole grain, wheat flour. Great. Rye flour, salt. So it passes that one. Not bad. And then we look at the, the, um, the fat on here, no fat, calories for fat, zero. So it's gonna pass that one. So this one passes all three of our tests. And this one would be something that if you were going to uh, look to, to try and eat a processed food like this, that this would be something that I would be um, more uh, okay with you, with you uh, trying. Uh, Triscuits, so same, same sort of uh, um, test here. So first we start with the sodium, sodium 150 compared to the calories is 110, that's higher than we'd like. So it does not pass uh, from the get go on that. And then if we look at some of the other things here, whole grain wheat, good, all right, uh, uh, that looks good. Canola oil, we talked about canola oil a second ago. So there's, there is some fat early in the, in the um, um, ingredient list here. Um, and this one doesn't have the calories from fat um, uh, listed. So we're gonna do a quick little calculation. 2.5 times nine is 22 and a half. Um, and then we divide that by 110 and that gets us to exactly 20%. So the, the um, calories from fat for this product is 20%. Um, this one here is questionable. You know, there's probably healthier things out there for you to eat from a packaged food perspective, um, but all said and done, this isn't as bad as other stuff. Um, it, it, it kind of it passes two out of our, our three um, um, here with the salt being the, the, the uh, uh, part of it that it does not pass. So um, I'm going to end on uh, the place where I sort of started on this is the, is the food rules. 
um, and uh, the, the recommendation that we really should be eating real food to begin with, um, not too much of it and mostly plants. Um, you know, one of the other things I would like to add and kind of finish up with here is that most of us eat, if we were to kind of take an inventory of the foods that we eat, we eat 20 or 30 foods and uh, we just kind of cycle through these foods. Um, so it can be a helpful exercise. You actually listed these things out. What are the things that I'm, that I'm eating and how can I make substitutions up uh, um, to, to eat healthier things than what I am eating? Um, my hope from my presentation today is that you can go and look in your pantry and, and start doing a little bit of an analysis of some of the stuff that you have and see if there's some, some swaps and some substitutions that you can make. And then the next time you go to the grocery store, um, you can also have uh, be empowered with this information to really be able to quickly analyze a nutrition label um, and, uh, and make a decision about uh, how you'd want to eat some of these foods. And then uh, there's my shout out on my references to, uh, to Jeff um, uh, for some of this information that I was able to utilize today. Dr. Stevens, that was awesome. This is Megan and I'll get to ask you questions here today. Hi, Megan. Uh, hi, so we have a few that have come in. Um, the first one here um, from Amy, uh, Dr. Kyle, I work with, with labels in my job. I know that different sugars can be listed as separate items like dextrose and sucrose. Uh, together, they might make way more sugar. What should we look for? So that, yeah, that was kind of what I was getting, getting at earlier is when they, when, when they'll, so they'll, 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 we need to get comfortable and familiar with what the sugars are called, right? So there's a lot of different names. It's the same thing with fat. There's a lot of different names for this stuff. So we need to start getting a little bit of familiarity with what these things are called first off. And then once we start getting a little bit of a familiar, familiarity with it, then it's really kind of looking at these, these uh, uh, labels. And, and that's why this analysis of, of, the, of whether or not it's in the first five can oftentimes be helpful, right? Um, the, if you have honey listed at four or five, you know, it doesn't really pass the test. And then you start having all the other sugars listed at seven and eight and nine and 10, you know, we're getting ourselves into some trouble from, from how much added sugar uh, is going to be in that product. You know, I didn't say this before, but I mean, one of the other sort of rules of thumb here is that we, the more ingredients on this list, the, the less we want to be eating this food to begin with, right? So uh, something that's, that's 10 uh, ingredients long, I'd probably want to put that back on the shelf and be looking for something else anyway. Um, so I hope that kind of answers the question. Fantastic. Um, and another, um, a question about coconut oil, if you could explain why that was such a fad. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Um, the we like fat, right? We like salt. We like sugar. These things hit our dopamine uh, um, pathways and light us up and make us very, very happy and feel satisfied in in, in ways that that then become sort of this addictive pathway. And so, coconut oil does that from a fat perspective. So, um, it's. It was such a fad because we try and, and uh, figure out new and in, in innovative ways to continue to eat uh, um, in ways that reward us, I guess I would say, even if they're not healthy. That's great. And last one, I know there are some questions we haven't gotten to. We'll keep those and try to answer them there at the end or on the website. Uh, but Dr. Kyle, um, is honey a natural sugar or should honey be avoided? So honey, you know, I actually don't have as much of an, uh, an issue with honey. So, you know, if we're doing a little, a little bit of honey in, uh, in some tea, if we're doing a little bit of honey in our, in our oatmeal in the morning, um, these types of, of, uh, a little bit of added sugar, um, in those ways, I really don't have that, that much of an issue with, um, you know, and I think that when we, when we start looking at some of the interesting, uh, data that's out there about local honey and allergies and, and, uh, and whatnot, uh, I, I think that that's a reasonable thing for, uh, for, for we, for us to, to, uh, consider having part of a good, healthy diet, um, 
there's a little bit of a quantity issue here, right? I mean, if we're doing tablespoon after tablespoon of honey in your, in your um, tea, and that's the only way you can drink your tea, I would, you know, try and encourage you to start reducing that slowly, 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 so that it's not that much. Thank you so very much. That was a great presentation.